vocals. The most important part of any record. Pop, rock, dance, disco, whatever you want to talk about, it's vocal centric and it matters. So we're going to talk about vocal production and arrangement. I'm going to show you some tips and techniques to make your vocal parts really sound interesting. I'm going to teach you a couple things to keep your listener engaged without them actually hearing those vocal parts. I want them to feel it. You want them to get that emotion across. So let's get right into it with this mix series on vocal production and arrangement. Now before I get into it, you have to have a song that actually has vocals in it first, right? So I'm going to get right into it with this song from Drew Knight and myself. It's called Stars. Let's play a little part of it. Then I'll show you how to go from chorus one, chorus two to the big outro chorus and make sure your vocals are always getting bigger and better and more special. there's a little snippet of the first chorus now it's really important to understand that when you're making choruses stacking vocals is one of those things that we just do in pop music whether it's synth pop synth wave r&b trap we stack vocals it's a big huge part of the technique of producing modern vocals so here is the first layer which is just the lead Now, the reason I'm showing you just the lead vocal is you have to understand the lead vocal is the key to great vocal production. And I know you're like, duh. Yeah. But most people rely so much on doubles and stacks and you start to lose the fact that there's a, an actual lead. So you want to put that up front and in the center and it needs to be big and impactful. So with this lead, it's big, it's impactful, it's front and center. So how do we make it better? We stack in some doubles. So for this part here that I'm about to play you, I'm going to double the lead vocal with my voice, which is a different timbre and texture, which I always recommend. If you're trying to make vocals bigger, you should get a different singer to double. If it's just you, obviously you have to do it on your own, but the more timbres and different textures you can get in, the deeper, wider, more dynamic the song is gonna feel. If it's just your voice the whole time, it might not sound as big. All right, so what I did is I doubled Drew's vocal with my vocal. Here's the double, and then I'll pop in the harmonies in and out. I'm falling into an ocean full of stars tonight Trying to keep my head above the tide Falling into an ocean full of stars tonight Okay, it's very important to understand that when you timbre stack and you put in different vocalists, you're going to get a lot wider and deeper. That's really important with vocal production. So I have a left-right harmony, right? And then I have a double stacking the lead here. So let's go to chorus two and let's see what we do a little differently. Now there are ad-libs in the middle as well, pocketing these little areas, uh, the O, O, O's stuff. That's going to give it more vibe. It's going to give it more movement. You really want to plug any gaps with licks or things to keep the listener engaged. Maybe it's just to put the listener's ear into something that's deeper in the mix or to the left and right or, you know, wherever something you got to direct it kind of like lighting a set on at a film, you want to direct the eye. If I take this light and I move it like this, your eye gets directed over here in the background. It just, it's not as directed towards me. Now, if I pop it right in my face, you go, oh, he's the subject. You want to light the subject. So that happens a lot with vocal production is you want to make sure that the eye, the ear is listening in on the thing that you're trying to get the listener to listen to. Listen to me now. So in the pockets, for example, on this chorus, we have the O's, right? Now listen how your ear goes to those O's after the vocal plays. And then you get the ad-libs. So there's 
there's a bit of play here that is a lot more than meets the ear, okay? You're going up front and you're saying the thing you want to say, but it's about falling into an ocean full of stars tonight. So the lyric itself sounds like falling. So when there's that gap, we put the vocal in the back so it sounds like it's falling, right? Like we give this big galaxy dimension space and the ear falls into the track. It pulls you in and then it pulls you back out and it pulls you in. And that's the dynamic vocal production. That's why we have these drowned out reverbs. Um, and I'll show you kind of some of the reverbs we have. We have a uh, weakened reverb long. So this is uh, one of the reverbs. It has an NLS channel, gives a little bit of warmth, a little bit of harmonics, just like going through a console. Um, this is an EQ to dip out the mid range 2K area. So it doesn't get too bright and it's more of a dark verb. And then we have the Valhalla, which is at 100% with a little pre-delay, 3.1. Random space, 80s, large hall. And then I typically high cut um, down to even lower than 7,000 a lot of the times if I want something to be deep and dark. Um, so that one's kind of brighter. And then we have this guy, which is rolling out a lot of this in the middle. And then just a little bit of this on the sides. So it gives like a really deep vibe to the verb. Okay, so that's just one of the verbs. On bus two is our second verb, which is going to be the same thing. We have the NLS giving it a little warmth, and then it's shooting into the Valhalla vintage verb on a plate. And this one's a little shorter. So this is going to give you like a pre-delay and at a 50 millisecond pre-delay as well. So you're getting like that kind of splash echo uh, depth kind of vibe. And then we have bus nine, which bus nine is here, and we have a little delay. So NLS... We have the delay at a quarter note. Quarter note is going to make it feel a little bit deeper because it's, you know, going at a quarter note rather than an eighth or sixteenth, which makes it feel not as long and not as uh, as vibey. And then a little stereo spread, but barely anything here. 1.27. Okay. So that's it. And then we also have bus six, which is going to this guy here, which is a doubler. And it's kind of like a, uh, a widens out the vocals. I take out some top. I take out the middle because the middle is reserved for the lead vocal to be up front and in your face. And the top is for the sparkle and sheen of the lead vocal. These doubles and this, this reverb does not need to be taking up any of that space. I want this to be depth. I want it to feel deep. Okay, and then I have the doubler, which is giving you more width, right? And a lot more depth as well. And then the S1 imager that pushes it even wider. And this is at 1.73. So it is doing some widening. So that is kind of like how I push into a reverb and make it really, really deep. I'm using actually one, two, three, four different verbs, uh, you know, three different verbs in a delay. So that's going to give me a lot of depth. Now let's go to the next chorus. The next chorus, you could see some things get added in here, and this is another harmony. So here's what we got for these vocal stacks, and this makes this chorus feel a lot bigger even. So as we go through the choruses, we're do, do, do. We want to build up and keep the listener excited. If you're liking this so far, like the video, share the show. That's all I ask. If you got any questions at all about this setup, vocal production arrangement, drop a comment. I'll answer every single comment. I always do. I do it personally, okay? Appreciate you guys. All right, check it out. Now we're going to get right into chorus two. Here we go. It just gets bigger, right? So let's solo out these vocals and let's hear what's going on here. I'm falling into an ocean full of stars tonight. All right, so we get a second layer of harmonies and th these harmonies are these guys right here, okay? These bottom guys. Now let's listen to these and what they're doing. I'm falling into an ocean full of stars tonight. I'm falling into an ocean full of stars tonight I'm falling into an ocean full of stars tonight Okay, so that's a big trick to make a chorus sound bigger and more impactful is to anchor it down with a lower harmony. So that's what that's doing. It's kind of anchoring it down and it's making it feel more weighted. And I like that a lot. I think that that's a very effective way to get more weight and a bigger chorus. Uh, but we are also at the end here 
throwing in some vocoded uh, vocals that I want to show you because I think these are really cool. And another stack here going into the chorus, uh, which is going to give it more dynamic, more movement. And let's just play all these things so we can understand exactly what they're doing. Falling again. I'm falling into an ocean full of stars tonight. Okay, so you can hear that. Falling again. And then it goes into this big chorus. And then at the second half of the chorus, and this is a technique I use a lot of the times, and hopefully you're paying attention. If you're paying attention right now, just comment. I'm paying attention. I really am. I understand this. I want to know vocal production. I want to know who's serious and who's just like out of here because I didn't give you a, a plug-in cheat code, all right? At the end of the chorus, when the chorus comes back around and repeats, I wanna add something new and I wanna take something out. So here I drop out the weighted vocals and I pop in some vocoded vocals here, okay? And then I'm gonna show you how I vocoded them as well. So check this out. This is where a different texture comes in and it's like, whoa, that's that's interesting. Falling into an ocean full of stars tonight Feels like I'm running out of time Okay, so check it out. I'm going to solo out these vocoded uh, vocals just so you can hear what they're adding, but you're going to feel them more than anything. Okay, so here they are. Just soloed out. Feels like I'm running out of time. Feels like I'm running out of time. So you see what that does? It kind of like blends perfectly with the synth and the synth wave vibe that we have going on. Um, and the vocoded vocals, I'm going to go through them. They're auto-tuned, obviously. That's pretty obvious. I want to auto-tune this kind of stuff. Now, here's the cool part. Since you got this far, if you drop a comment, I want that preset, I will send you my vocoder preset for Vocal Synth 2, Isotope. All right? That's only for you because you got this far. <laughs> I want to give you guys these little nuggets for, for going this far in the videos. All right, so I'm going to give you that vocal preset. Uh, I'll give you the whole channel strip if you want it. I don't know if you have all the plugins, but I'll definitely give you the vocal synth. Just drop a comment right here. Um, Pro Q3, you see how much I'm doing with this? Now check this out. This is without it. I'm just going to play this without this EQ so you can understand how much I shaped it. Feels like I'm running out of time. Okay, so I want that to be like a sliver. I want it out of the way of the lead vocal. I don't want a bunch of low end in there. I don't want a bunch of high end in there. I just want that vocoded kind of middle area right here, okay? And the 2K I always just drives me crazy when 2K keeps building up. Hopefully this is helpful for you guys. If it is, like the video, share it, subscribe to the channel. I'm going to keep saying that shit. So then I got 1176, of course, holding it together. Uh, I got the Studer A800, which gives it some really nice texture and glue. Pro DS, always need to DS the crap out of any doubles any stacks because you don't want the s's in there and then the pro mb now i'm sending this to the reverb and to 24 this is a whole new 480l slap okay so this guy right here is like a slap effect check it out i'm gonna send a bunch of it to it just so you can hear it Feels like I'm running out of time. okay nice dimension pushes it back you're like whoa that's cool holy shit so I'm going to uh, take this back out and let's listen to it all in its full form. You can hear all the vocals together here with the track. So that is it. That is the trick. You want to add new textures, take out other textures. If you realize what's going on, this is chorus one right here, okay? You have just a double and you have a left right harmony. This is chorus two. You have a double, you have a left right harmony, you have low harmony, left right, and then you have vocoded uh, vocals coming out the sides and dropping out the low harmony. And then at the end of the phrase, I got all of it just hitting you really hard before we go into the bridge. Now let's go to the outro chorus. What's new? Uh, a whole lot of nothing on this, but it's probably more effects. 
Um, so that's really what I do here on the chorus at the end is I probably push more effects through. So you can see here, it's still kind of the same stack, but there's like new pads and keys coming in and all this stuff that's going to kind of give it more fullness. Uh, and that, that's it guys. Like there's really not a whole lot of craziness to this. What it really is, it's very well thought out harmony stacks doubles, things that are going to give it more space and going to get your ear something, some new ear candy. You don't know why it's different, but it is different. I'm not just flying choruses over. Okay. And another technique is to track every single chorus a little bit differently and then track every double and harmony a little bit differently to those new choruses. And that's going to give you a lot of dynamic. It's going to keep your ear engaged. It's going to keep your listener happy. So if you like the video, you know what to do, share it. All right, and if you got this far, again, just drop a comment. Let me know. Hey, I want your vocoder preset. I want that channel strip, and I will hit you. Shoot me your email. Let's go. Peace out, guys.